I like that theory. I mean, if you're going to take the point of view that I am and have a good rebuttal to it, that the reason you don't see any 30-foot Nephilim is that they're being hidden away right now um, for some final revealing later on. Um, but meanwhile, they're back breeding and getting Nephilim that look closer and closer to human. You still have to deal with that sterile thing. Even if they were doing that, and even if they were keeping 30-foot Nephilim away from the eyes of society somehow, you know, I'm sure the theories like ships or underground caverns or underground military bases are, you know, there's plenty of theories as to where they'd be keeping them, but they're sterile. You're not going to be able to continue a hybridization program beyond that. Now, as, I soon as, have, as soon as you have a couple generations, it's you're not going to be able to. I don't feel that you're going to be able to backbreed it successfully enough to pass. You know, given that the original is a 30 foot monster with six fingers and toes and two teeth, I don't think you're going to have the successful um, integrating to get that down to something that looks human. And again, what would be the point of it if if all of its powers are the fact that it's a giant and that it's strong? You know. So what if it looked like? So what if it did pass for human? By the time it passed for human, it would be fully human, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I I agree with you there. Um, one thing that I've always it's it's kind of been in my head, and I've kind of started trying to associate um, UFO uh, reported UFO crashings with our sudden developments or interest in certain kinds of technologies. Um, it, during my research, I found that one of the earliest UFO, reported UFO crashes was around 1897, and, and around, I think it was 1904 or 1902, uh, the Wright brothers made their, their first flight. Mm -hmm. And it seems that uh, reported alien crashes coincide with some, some huge technological leap a couple of years later. Do you believe that these fallen angels have technology, or is this purely a spiritual power type of thing? Oh, that's a couple. That's a good question with a couple easy directions to take. Um, the first thing is you you know the story about the four minute mile, don't you? Uh, no, I haven't, and I'm sure uh, well, all of our listeners haven't. Oh well, throughout all of human history, it was never ever believed for one second that a man could run a mile in four minutes. And then it happened. I, I'm sorry, I forget the guy's name who actually did it in the Olympics. And then within five years, 50 other people had had done it. And I'm I'm kind of associating the the technological leap there uh, simply with a belief system is that mankind had a in a sense a limited a limiting belief system that the four minute mile can't be broken. But as soon as you showed them it could be. Well then, well let's go for it. And I think the technological thing is could be similar in that that whether a UFO really crashed from another planet, if you create the belief system that there's a object flying, an unidentified flying object from another planet flying in the atmosphere, well then mankind's belief system, you know, they're going to start. Well, what are the steps to take to get there? Let's start with this. You know, really, when you see, you know, the Bible just calls it signs in the sky. When you see things and you attribute a technological explanation to them, I think it's natural that you begin um, working on technology that could take you more and more towards that. But I guess as much as you have studied the Genesis 6 phenomena, you're very familiar with the Book of Enoch as well, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah um, the Book of Enoch for the readers that aren't familiar with it, it kind of tells the whole story of what was happening in what the Bible records in four sentences, or verse 1 through 4 of Genesis chapter 6. Yeah. Um, Enoch expounds upon what was going on there, and it's not considered scripture and canon, but it is quoted in the book of Jude. There's a direct quote from the book of Enoch in the book of Jude. Interestingly, when the Catholic Church banned this angelic view of Genesis 6, is when they also banned the Book of Enoch from study um, because it affirms the angelic view. But part of the story of uh, the Book of Enoch has to do with the technology, the watchers. That's a word you'll find in your King James Bible in Daniel. Um, the watchers were giving mankind certain technology 
that included astronomy and astrology, that included metallurgy, um, the beating of uh, swords and shields for the purpose of warfare. They introduced um, the psychotropic properties of drugs to mankind. And these are all technologies that were, you know, for the age, they were far flung, they were fantastic. But they were also technologies that we would use to kill ourselves and others with. So given the, the two answers I've already talked about, the four-minute mile and a belief system, just, you know, the cap being taken off of what you believe is possible will, will help you begin to start to achieve what you previously thought was impossible, such as the Wright brothers. You know, if there's reports of something flying around in the sky, some American ingenuity guy is just going to do it. But between that and the fact that um, part and parcel of this fallen angel um, recorded history is the giving of certain technology to mankind, I really believe that 1800s, 1900s, there's a good 50-year period where I think people were getting channeled or occult information having to do with technology, anti-gravity, uh, metallurgy, and um, physics that mankind had not yet at least discovered, but that uh, the occultists and the mediums that were actually having seances and summoning these beings, uh, that's part of what was communicated to them, and that might be where a lot of the technology actually came from. It's stuff that's far-flung, that could be used to advance mankind tremendously, but again, what have we done with that technology? It's been the military that, that's uh, advanced most of our technology because we wanted a better fighting machine. We were tired of swords and shields, you know? Yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's, let's switch for a minute to the religious agenda behind this um, alien UFO, angel, fallen angel phenomenon that's going on. Um, Repeat that for me, before, I'm sorry. I was saying, let's, let's switch to the religious agenda behind the phenomenon. And you mentioned <clears> before it's kind of a new age thing. Um, can you expound on... One, what New Age is for those people that don't know, and two, why these beings seem to be pushing an agenda away from God and attacking the Bible and Christ during these abductions. Yeah, uh, you've hit a, on a very common thread of all abductee and contactee reports is that you know, this is kind of the talk I give on the symposium. You can watch it for free online. Uh, you can find E.T.'s message on AlienStranger.com is that, you know, if these were honest extraterrestrials traveling 90 billion light years, you, you would imagine that what they had to, if they could talk to us or if they would, that a lot of what they'd have to impart would be generally about science or physics. No, excuse me, cough thing. Physics, science, space travel. Uh, you know, and understanding the universe, maybe at a subatomic level or whatever. But it's so extremely well documented that really all they have to talk about for the most part is spirituality. That They begin to say, uh, they teach that in some instances that they actually are the creators of life on Earth. Um, they come around and say things like uh, everything that you see in the Bible, like that whole fire by night, cloud by day thing, well, that was really just a UFO. That was aliens. Um, when Elijah and Jesus ascended into heaven, well, they were really beamed into the a UFO. The, the very immaculate conception itself, the conception of Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. No, that was alien abduction, artificial insemination. Jesus is, in fact, a hybrid alien that we sent you to sh help show you the way. Um, it really, there's a, an agenda, and you even talked about Hollywood. I'm sure you saw the movie Knowing this year with Nick Cage, didn't you? Um, honestly, I think I'll that one. Oh, boy. Uh, I'd encourage you to rent it just for your research. you got to have a knowledge of this movie in your arsenal in this field. I wouldn't encourage anyone to see it and believe it, but it just basically it retells this whole uh, what Ezekiel saw in it's, chapter one was a UFO. It, it, by the end of the movie, it's revealed that the aliens that are abducting and communicating with people are really biblical angels. And uh, uh, right when the Earth literally is destroyed in this, at the end of this movie. Oh, he was. Oh, I, I know what you said. Oh, the, the knowing. knowing. I thought. You, I knowing, thought you said, right? Yeah. I thought he said Noah. Noah. Oh, oh okay, I apologize. Okay, I following, knowing. Yeah. Knowing. Yes, yeah. I, I saw it. I yeah. definitely saw that. It's it the that aliens movie. and their spaceships that saved humanity at the very end. It, it's like right, uh, right. It's like diminishing all that's said in the Book of Revelation and Matthew 24 about the judgment of God coming, and that. Um, 